بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو مائی ٹینتھ کلاس دس از مائی ٹینتھ لیکچر سو ان دس لیکچر وی ول ڈسکس اباؤٹ دی تھائرائڈ ہارمون پریپیریشن سو ایز این پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو ڈسکس اباؤٹ ڈفرینٹ اینٹی تھائرائڈ ڈرگس وچ آر یوز ان دا ٹریٹمنٹ آف تھائرائڈ ڈس آڈرس سو تھائرائڈ ہارمون پریپیریشنس The first one is leuthyroxines, that is called T4s, or you can say T4 tetraidothyronine. This is the preparation of choice for thyroid replacement and suppression therapy because it is stable and it is long, seven days, half life, to be administered once daily. Leuthyroxine, T4, they are available as oral preparation so they are available in a tablet form from 0.025 to 0.3 milligrams while they are also available in injectable form so for parental use they are available in 200 to 500 micrograms or 100 microgram per ml when reconstituted for injection In thyroid hormone preparation, the second one is liobthyronine, that is called T3 or triiodothyronine. So this is more potent and three to four times and rapid acting than leuthyroxine but has a short half-life that is 24 hours as compared to the leuf, which is not recommended for routine replacement therapy. It required multiple dosing in a day. <coughs> as we have discussed about the half life of the drug that uh, uh, this is the time which is required for a drug to achieve the peak plasma concentration to be reduced 50% half of its original concentration so it should be avoided in cardiac patients <coughs> oral preparation they are available in 5 to 50 micrograms in tablet form for parental use so they are available in 10 microgram per ml now come to all the treatment of maxedema coma For example, let's suppose a patient <coughs> who has a disorder of maxedema coma. So oxygen intubations should be done and as well as ventilation if there is respiratory failures. The second one is you will have to check the uh, blood glucose level, rapid blood glucose levels. So uh, in that conditions, uh, uh, you can easily uh, recommend it, uh, IV uh, fluids, uh, D50, dextrose pepti and hydrocortisone at the dose of 100 to 250 milligram IV intravenously. Cautious slow rewarmings, warm oxygen scalp, grinds and exhala, warm packs on NG tube leverage should be done. <coughs> Thyroxine <coughs> T4 500 microgram IV then 50 microgram IV for days and 8 25 microgram T3 for oral or by NG tube by NG cube. for 12 hours ft4 to t3 peripheral conversion possibly impairs careful iv fluid rehydrations watch for chf congestive heart failure so as we have already discussed that let's suppose if a patient who has you can say heart cardiac problem so it mean then lithyroxine it should be avoided so it cannot be given to the patient <coughs> thyroids <coughs> disorder of thyroid hormone axis let's suppose if the thyroid hormones if they become overactive and if the thyroxine they are produce an excess quantity so what will be the consequences what will be the results the results will be in the form of thyrotoxicosis so thyrotoxicosis is the term used for all disorders <coughs> with increased levels of circulating thyroid hormone hyperthyroidism refer to the disorder in which the thyroid gland secrete too much hormone the radioactive iodine uptake test or a ui it distinguish the hyperthyroidism from other form of thyrotoxicosis this test is usually performed which is called radioactive iodine uptake test to differentiate between 
<coughs> hyperthyroidism and other form of thyrotoxicosis. <coughs> thyrotoxicosis with elevated <coughs> or a UI in case of these are the cases especially and these conditions the thyrotoxicated with elevated RAU radioactive iodine uptake test it must be elevated especially in gravest disease and pituitary tumor secreting excess and thyroid stimulating hormones pituitary and sensitivity to feedback and hydrated forms hydrated form moles choriocarcinoma and testes embryonal carcinoma and as well as in case of toxic multinodular guiter and another one is toxic unidolar guiter and the uh, drug inducing uh, uh, like uh, hyperthyroidism and iodines and you can say mi drones and lithium etc Due to these conditions, uh, the thyrotoxicated with elevated RAUI. These are the <coughs> features of Graves disease. Look at here. So look at here in this image. In this picture, you will see these are the symptoms. You can say uh, the uh, appearances, the feature of the Graves disease. And toxic, this is called toxic diffuse goiter. And this condition is called toxic multinodular goiter. So here... <coughs> What are the clinical features or characteristics of Graves' disease? So, most common cause of hyperthyroidism is 70 to 85 percent of all cases caused by thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins antibody, and mainly in young adults <coughs> ages 20 to 50, five times more frequent in women. Half of the cases have infiltratio <coughs> ophthalmopathy with exophthalmus not seen with other cause of hyperthyroidism. So half of the cases have infiltratio and ophthalmopathy with uh, exophthalmus not seen with other cause of hyperthyroidism. 5% Five have free TBL myxedema. Toxic multinodular goiter is the second most common cause of hyperthyroidism and most cases in women in 10 to 7 decade upon have long standing goiter. Symptoms usually develop slowly and briskly. Now, these are the symptoms of thyrotoxic cases which are reported here narrowness, restless, and shortens attention span, emotional liability, and difficulty sleeping, increased appetite. <clears throat> weight loss, heat intolerance and fever, diaporesis and weakness, menstrual irregularity may be a current case of female. These are the signs of the thyrotoxicosis which are reported. So it may be in the form of sinus tachycardia, uh, atrial fibrillation, tremor, hyperreflexia, muscle wasting, warmth, erythromatosis, moist skin, alopecia, nail friability and separation from the bed hyperventilation, eyelid lead retraction may be occurs, lead leg and persistent steer hyperactive bowel sounds with gravis may have exothalmus tender and large thyroid and pretibial myxedema may be occurs. <laughs> Now look at here, these are the anti-thyroid agents. So in anti-thyroid agent, the first one is thioamide. So in thioamide uh, include methimazoles, <coughs> carbimazoles and propyl thio thiouracils. So these are the three agents which come under the group of uh, the category of thioamides. The second one is radioactive iodines which are iodide, iodide are the aqueous potassium iodide solutions, logals, iodines, iodinated contrast media, oral, iodide and epinoic acid, diatrizoate. <coughs> Its simple mechanism of action is <coughs> the agents which interfere the production of thyroid hormone these agents which modify the tissue response to the thyroid hormone glandular destruction with radiation or surgery sometimes the disease cannot be treated with chemotherapeutic agents so after that uh, radio uh, vaccination should be done and if uh, if vaccinations doesn't uh, 
complete the requirement of the patient then we can directly recommend it the uh, radiotherapy thiomides thiomides uh, contains uh, methamazole carbimazole and profile thiouracils as we know that methamazole is 10 times more active than propyl thiuracil so its main mechanism of action or mode of action so they are responsible to cause to inhibit the thyroid peroxidase enzyme so they are responsible to stop the growth of thyroid peroxidase enzyme and it can catalyze the reaction to block the iodine or guinification which i have already discussed in my previous lecture about the iodine organification so how so they can block the coupling of iodothyrone tyrosines tyrosine and then they inhibit the peripheral d iodination of t4 to t3 the onset of drug is low requiring three to four weeks before stores of t4 they are depleted <coughs> now come to world the uh, profile thiuracils and methamazole so these are the uh, two drugs or agents in which we can differentiate between uh, profiles thiuracils and methamazole as we know that uh, the difference between profile thiuracils and methamazoles look at the absorptions uh, the propyl thiouracil so its absorption is rapid but the problem is that is incomplete while metamazole is at variable rates its absorption is occur at variable rates but it is complete <coughs> it means this one is more potent now look at the volume of distribution so the profile thiuracil so its volume of distribution is approximately uh, body waters and that is while the methamazole they are similar it means it can distribute it approximately in the body waters <coughs> look at the protein binding so the profile thiuracil they are mores they are highly protein bindings drug profile thiuracil and, and this is this one is less the propyl uracils uh, if we can compare the accumulations so the propyl uh, thiuracil so they are accumulated in the thyroid uh, and is similar to methamazoles the profile thiuracil they are excreted uh, through the kidneys in ectioglucuronide in 24 hours while methamazole its excretions <coughs> is very slow and 60 to 70 percent of the drug is recovered in urine and 48 hours the half-life of profile thiuracil is 1.5 hours it means that after certain period of times the half-life of the drug will be reduced 50 percent up of its original concentration while the half-life of methamazole is six hours the administrations the profile thiuracil can be administered every six to eight hours while methamazole can be administered in a single dose and 24 hours the duration of activity of profile thiuracil is 100 milligram in inhibits iodine or guinification per seven hours while methamazole is 30 milligram exerts anti-thyroid effect for longer than 24 hours Profile uracils, uh, they can, uh, regarding pregnancy, so a, a profile uracil can be preferred, so it can through a class placenta in its concentration and fetal thyroid, but it is highly protein bound, due to highly protein bound, so it can cross placenta less readily as compared to the methimazole. So methimazole can cross the placenta and concentrated by the fetal thyroid, so while the nursing mothers profile thiuracil so they are actually less secreted in the breast milk as compared to the methamazole and they are highly secreted in the breast milk now the adverse effects of thioamides which are reported so it occur in 3 to 12 percent of treated patients uh, mucolopapulars uh, rash and fever their earliest effects articarial rashes vasculitis uh, especially arthralgia, myalgia, and cholecystic jaundice, as well as the lymphadenopathy and uh, hypoprothrombinemia. We <coughs> when the thrombin concentrations it become low, low count of prothrombins. 
most dangerous complication is egg granulocytosis and this is infrequent but may be fatal these are the adr which are reported and adr is always occur due to overdosing of what thymides now come to world iodides uh, logols iodines well rapidly absorbed from the intestines rapidly taken by the thyroid gland and concentrated moderately increase lead to hormone secretion but substantial excess inhibit the hormone release and promote its storage making the organ less vascular and formers stronger iodide stores in thyroids delays responses to thioamide so they inhibit the organification and hormone release with the dose of you can say 6 mg greater than 6 mg per day and they should be initiated after the onset of thioamide therapy it also decreases the vascularity 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 mean that is directly related with your blood vessels vascularity of hyperplastic glands and improvement as rapid within 2 to 7 days and valuable in thyroid storm precaution and toxicity which are reported so it shouldn't be used as a single therapy shouldn't be used in pregnancy and it may produce iod iodisms causing acne from red swelling of salivary gland mucous membrane ulcerations metabolic taste bleeding disorder and rarely in epilepsy so mean these are the toxicity which are reported what is radioactive iodine so radioactive iodine can be uh, administered orally uh, radioactive iodine is actually it is rapidly absorbed and concentrated in thyroid gland and stored in the follicles so it is half life of about 8 days and emits the gamma rays and beta particles and the beta particles get accumulated in the gland and destroy the parenchyma so it is easy to administer the effective painless and less expensive it causes the destruction of parenchyma necrosis and follicular disruptions therapeutic effect is due to emission of beta rays and the patient with age above 40 years only can be treated with this it can easily cross the placenta and excrete it in the breast milk radioactive iodine so it may cause genetic damage damage uh, and leukemia when the red blood cell they are produce an abnormal quantity in neoplasma when new outgrowth is formed it may be car- can carcinogenic so ready active iodine these are carcinogenic in nature iodinated contrast media opposite contrast mean opposite characteristics so uh, iodinated contrast medias are orals uh, epidet and epinic acids and iv diastrazoate so they are richly iodinated compounds so they are responsible which can inhibit the 5 d iodinase enzyme in it can prevent the conversion of tetraiodothyronine to triiodothyronine and the liver which is the major organ responsible for the metabolism as well as kidney and pituitary gland and brain what are the name of the drugs which causing new uh, <coughs> thyroids uh, hyperthyroxinemia so the first drug is oral contraceptive the drug which is used in the treatment the drug which is used to treat to avoid the if uh, the drug is taken orally and through uh, oral uh, drug we can avoid pregnancy so oral contraceptive are those drug which are taken orally to avoid the pregnancy so especially oral contraceptive they are strongly restricted they are not recommended and these are the drugs which are responsible to cause youth thyroids hyper thyroxinemia the second one is narcotics narcotics are also called narcotics in the form of methadones and heroin these are narcotics so these drugs also causing hyperthyroxinemia it will directly enhance the thyroxine levels and uh, beside this parpenazines and clofibrates fluorouracils heparins and amiodarones iodine contrast agents so these are the drugs which are responsible to cause thyroid hyperthyroxinemia 
Uh, now come to our, uh, another uh, disease that is called thyroid storm. So thyroid storm is also called hyperthyroidism crisis. It, in, in other words, you can say hyperthyroidism crisis. This is exaggerated or florid state, state of thyrotoxicosis. This is life threatening condition, sudden onset of thyroid hyperactivity occurs and may represent uh, end stage of continuum. They, uh, thyroid hyperactivity to thyrotoxicosis to thyrotoxicosis crisis to thyroid storm and probably it reflects the addition of adrenergic hyperactivity and induced by the non-specific stress into the setting of untreated or, or unrelated or, or you can say under-treated hyperthyroidism. Thyroid storm most cases secondary to Graves disease some due to toxic multinodular guiders rare cases and maybe acutes and thyroiditis uh, uh, and uh, fictitious malignancies most uh, uh, do not efficiently produce thyroid hormones. Thyroid storms, these are the clinical features which are reported. So a patient, a person who has a thyroid storm, so he must will have these uh, symptoms. Uh, must be present and patients there may be high fever usually over 40 degree centigrade mean 103 104 102 degree Fahrenheit significantly abnormal mental status and agitation shivering may be occur confusion psychosis coma mark tachycardia vomiting may be occurs diarrhea and jaundice and 20 percent of the cases which are reported associated sign of gravis disease how thyroid storm can be treated so there will be high flow of oxygen rapidly cooling a marked uh, hyperthermic at the temperature let's suppose the temperature of the body is elevated exceeded so ice packs cooling blankets mist pans and nasogastric tube lavage acetaminophen and silicylates contraindicated because it causes peripheral deionation to T3 and IV fluid bolus should be injected if dehydrated if water electrolytes imbalance occur so then IV fluid should be recommended. It may need inotropes instead if NCHF congestive to heart failure. So propanolol a dose of 1 mg doses or libitalol is 10 to 20 mg doses IV and repeat the doses is needed. The thyroid storm can be treated uh, with the help of IV diltiazine, which is calcium channel blockers, uh, plus digoxin, uh, the drug which is used in the treatment of congestive heart failures for rate, for rate control for, so you can say, arterial fibrillations and IV diuretics, F and CHF congestive heart failures. And we, uh, IV hydrocortisone can be recommended intravenously hydrocortisone, which come under the category of corticosteroids, or equivalent 100 milligram profile thyroracils, uh, 600 to 1200 milligram per olers, or by NG tube, uh, so sodium iodides, 1 gram IV, one hour after. Uh, profile thyroid and to treat the uh, actually the precipitating cause the causing factor it should be uh, controls thank you so much for watching my lecture inshallah in my uh, lecture number 11 we will discuss about the other uh, agents which are used in the treatment of thyroid disorder uh, thank you dear students for watching this presentations